Yep. What's up, everybody? I'm Vivian Green, and you are watching Conversations with Cuddy. Peace and love. Hello, everybody. It is me again. It is your boy, Cuddy Sharp. Conversations with Cuddy with Shalant Magazine. And I have the beautiful award-winning singer-songwriter, Vivian Green, talking to us today. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. How are you doing during this COVID thing? Good, good. I, I honestly can't complain. Um, thank God I'm healthy and my family's healthy and we're you know, taking all the necessary precautions to stay safe and all that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, my heart goes out to all of the people who, who have been affected. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've honestly managed to finish my album during the quarantine. So it actually worked out for me. I was right. able to be very productive. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, like, you, I, we see one good thing. You have been continuing to be the humming, human hummingbird that you mm -hmm. are and come out with your new album on the 13th. <laughs> so let's talk about a little bit about the album because I want to go back to the other ones too. So let's get with what we're here for right now. We're here for all of it. So the new album, Love Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. The first single, let's just talk about the first single you send me. I love it. I love your, what do you call it? Up tempo? I call it mid tempo when you do that kind of tempo. Okay. You call it what? Is it up tempo to you or what? I guess it's almost mid tempo, mm -hmm. but kind of maybe still a ballad. But I know what you're saying. It has a little, it has a kick to it. Right. Was yeah. it was it uh, recorded with a live band? No. Oh, because all while I'm listening, I listen to it about 82 times, and I'm like, I know <laughs> it's a live band behind her. So how did the concept of that come with the um, album? Well, no, I, I wrote the song at the piano mm. first, and yeah, I wrote the melody, um, most of the lyrics. Breaks, and then once I was done with that, I gave it to Kwame to produce. So I did that with most of this album. So most all of the, I guess, ballads and mid tempos I made that way on Love Absolute, which which really makes it different from my other album because I've never intentionally done that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a song here, a song there, but never like, okay, this time I want to steer the ship for where we go music musically like chord wise like I want to write those chords not just write to tracks you know this right. Time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, it makes it very different because, I mean, like I said, I've never intentionally done it for any album, but that is the way that, that I began writing songs from, you know, when I was 11. That's how I started writing songs at mm -hmm. the piano by myself. I had no producer. I had no studio. I had no tracks. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And I just wanted to get back to that because, you know, I've strayed so far from that through the year, <laughs> over the years, and I wanted to get back to it. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that your process like that and where you came from because so many people think you have to start out with just a uh, just big old studio they see the concept of that and they think that's what it is like you don't even know how your natural process is going to come in a big yeah, studio you, yeah. like yeah. i love that you said that was a lesson right there it's dropping jams oh. a lesson right there so i also wanted to ask you about um but wait before i ask you anything i want to say i don't know if you got this comparison before i think of you as our modern day shaka khan no. Now, now, when you go back and listen to your catalog, now that you're listening from the outside of you, just think of that always, because that's what I kind of hear, like the modern day Shaka Khan. No, I'm. I, I I love Shaka Khan, so I'm definitely not like upset about it. But yeah, I don't. I definitely don't hear that though. Yeah. She sings like very very high. You know, mm -hmm. I can get up there, but she goes like beyond. So I don't know. Right. Yeah, not right. just the same yeah. vocal tone, but just like the like melodic the and yeah, the, yeah, yeah the voicing, that. the music and how you uh you uh compose, you know, you no, set I up your words and stuff. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I, I love it. And you know, and think of that now, like you said. <laughs> yeah. And I've always said one day I'm gonna be able to tell her oh. like how I feel about her music. And that's what I love about being a journalist. You get to tell people what? to their face how you right. feel about them. Right. Well, that is so interesting. What you, again, like I love her, so it's definitely not a bad thing at all. I'm just like, oh wow, really? <laughs> right. So I have a I have a corny question. Of what you're learning? I'm an Aries, so I got to be a little corny sometimes. I love Aries. My yeah. son's an Aries. Oh, okay. Well, he, he's great. No. <laughs> so has this your whole career been an emotional roller coaster? <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of corny. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do I, don't, it. I don't think it's been an emotional roller coaster, but it's been mm. a roller coaster, you know. Mm. I, I I think there are very few artists who 
can say that it, that it hasn't been. You know, right. the music business is, is, is music business is filled are full of hills and values. I'm sorry, hills and <laughs> valleys. I'm sorry. Uh, you're fine. Values. You know, it's filled with hills and valleys. That's what that's what it is, you know. Mm. Um, so I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe after your first, you know, emotional get, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> downward into the valley, you come up again. Maybe the next time you go down, it's not emotional. You just know what it is. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you just hold on, like, okay, I know what this is. <laughs> right. <laughs> so close my eyes, embrace myself. <laughs> I know, right. Like close your eyes and just hold your breath for a minute. Exactly. <laughs> I think so that's how how has it been from the first to the seventh album, though, speaking of that? Like the growth process in your writing and everything. Um, how has it been? You know, I, from the second album on, you know, I was very um, adamant about making sure I made music that was mine and that, that I felt was mine because the first album was not necessarily that um, in its uh, entirety. And, um, you know, at that time, there are a lot of trends going on, like trends in music, neo soul trend sounds that producers were using, you know, kind of following this trend. And for, you know, quite a few uh, tracks on the album, you know, definitely fell into that. Um, where other songs like Final Hour and Superwoman and Affected mm -hmm. don't fall into that at all. People just ignored Final Hour, Superwoman and Affected and just yeah. listened to the fanatic and was like, yes, She's a neo soul singer, you know. She has a yellow skirt and a flower. And I know that's what she is. A part of that, you know, and it's like that was like, wow, really? Like I didn't realize that that would happen, and you know, part of it is my naivete, totally. So mm -hmm. I'm not really blaming anyone but myself because I allowed it to happen, and even like um, styling wise as well. Like, um, and she's a very gifted st stylist, Marni Sanfante. Mm -hmm. um, he really is, but um, I think it was, you know, it was still following that that trend, you know, that mm -hmm. neo-soul trend, the look and all that. And none of that was ever me, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize the magnitude of that and and what people would get from it. You know, mm -hmm. I really didn't, I, I, I didn't. I was just really, you know, not, again, just very naive. Um, and so, for the second album, like I made a point to say, okay, I actually don't dress like that. The music I've been creating my whole life does not sound anything like Fanatic, right. so I'm gonna put this straight. And you know, it definitely turned a lot of people off. You know, so I think I have two sets of fans. Um, I call them the ALS fans, the love uh, story fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then everybody else that continued to appreciate and follow what I did after that. But it is, it is like a separation, and I'm okay yeah. with that. You know, and yeah. I was. I think I knew from my first out from my second album on that, you know, you're probably going to lose some people. And if you're okay with that, then do it, be yourself, please. Because there's nothing worse than not being yourself. And I would rather, you know, I don't know. I, I, I have to be myself and I was yeah. determined to do that from the second album forward. And that, and that's what I did. So, um, so yeah, it was, um, um, it, it was very difficult um, dealing with the criticism, you know, from people, mm -hmm. um, from that transition I made between the first album and, and the second album, like it was a clear thing that that was happening, and people right. were offended, you know, people were offended that my hair was straight, like it was just like, oh all my kinds God. Of, like, you know, back then I guess there were message boards that people were on, like tearing mm -hmm. me completely apart. Oh wow! You know, for my Vivian album, so I think that would be the most um, emotional, you know, time, and then. Once I got over that, I was like, okay, cool. And that, and I decided to say there are people who are fans of this album because maybe they they love Neo Soul, they love that look, they love the music. If they mm -hmm. want to be who I am, then that's on them. But I'm gonna be who I am, and yeah. I'm hurt, and and I'm gonna find happiness in that. So I think that was the big, the biggest, you know, emotional time. You right. Know? And then so the rest of the albums, I think I just you know explored. Um, doing all kinds of music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, um, and being true to my art. And then when I hooked up with Kwame in 2015 and we, and I signed to his label and we started working together, I think he found a way to let me be myself, but still bring it back like center where people would understand it and love it as, as well. Does that right. make sense? 
Yeah, and see the growth <laughs> and everything. Yeah, because I'm the kind of artist who, you know, I, I like to do what I feel, mm -hmm. whatever that is. And he, that that's me. He's the kind yeah. of artist and creator where he likes to do what people are going to feel. So mm -hmm. there's a balance there that really works out for the two of us. Yeah. yeah we might right. fight and it might be hard to work together, but we, we make it work. And, and, and so far it's been a really fantastic um, um, uh, collaboration with, with he and I on, on these last three albums. So. That's great. Because I think, or, well, not, let me not say I think, let me just say you are quite actually the, throughout your catalog, the music chameleon. Because you sometimes you're, you're jazzy. Sometimes you're R and B. Sometimes you're alternative. Like it's just no box, though. So, and I—that's right. and what I love about it. Thank you. That is so nice to hear. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like really, like that is so nice to hear because I think most people want you to stay in a box, and it is so nice to hear somebody say that. So I really, really appreciate what you just said like you have no idea <laughs> yeah it's like redundant if you don't and it's not really being yourself you never are right. going to be the same from day to day or right. feel the same way right exactly and especially when you know when you grew up in in, in a diverse you know home uh with, with two diverse music lovers you know uh, mm -hmm. my parents love everything they really really love everything and you know i've, I've never seen music as a one-dimensional monolith like ever so I, I I didn't understand that that's how that's how I would initially be received, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm so glad you said what you said because that is who I am. Everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Do you? That's all right. Look, that's what 2020 shows us anyway. It shows us like what everybody is about and what you're gonna do. What if the world really does shut down? What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Right. <laughs> yeah. So do you? And then, and we love it. So, you know, I'm one of millions, but you know. We love it. So, so um, let everybody know, before I say let everybody know where they can reach out to you, are you doing any virtual shows or anything like that? Um, No, not yet, but I am going to do them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we would love to see that too. We're keeping track. So, so I'm far, following... I've done, um, I mean, I haven't done any for like Love Absolute, but mm -hmm. one, one thing that I did for uh, Sirius XM Radio, um, but that was it. But over the summer, I did do several performances over the summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that and that was interesting. But again, like I haven't done like a, a show with a band or anything like that yet. No, everything has been to track so far. So, but I look forward to doing like a virtual band full, you know. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you are, you have made yourself immortal at this point. Throughout your catalog and everybody, I know you're so used to everybody feeling like they know you, but you don't know that everybody else. <laughs> so, so hey, I understand that. Not because it happened to me, but I just understand it. Because <laughs> I don't want it. I was like, oh, I don't think I want it like that. I want to be able to go to the Kroger and buy me some groceries. <laughs> <laughs> So let everybody know where they can uh, go by the album, Love Absolute, and how they can keep in touch with you and see what's going on with Vivian Green. Okay, so you can keep in touch with me um, via my socials. So that's at I am Vivian Green. Um, I, do, um, I do interact with my fans because it's really important to do that. Like I'm not on there to, you know, take pictures of my booty. <laughs> no, no, right? Right. I really, really do interact with my fans. That's what I'm there for. Or otherwise, I probably hate social media and wouldn't have any accounts. You know what I'm saying? If I were, if I were not a singer, so I am there to talk to my supporters, and I and I do try to respond to people. So please hit me up on any of the socials. Also, um, you can purchase Love Absolute on any platform. It's available on all streaming platforms itunes amazon as well for a physical copy you can actually go to the link um on any of my social pages and it'll take you directly to wherever you want to get the album from and even if you want a physical copy it's called mm -hmm. love absolute it's my seventh studio album and it marks 18 years in the business all right you are almost grown up in the business I almost know. grown up and the first single is you send me right well you send me was the first um instant grat track that they dropped okay so every week was a new song so it was mm -hmm. you send me then um where you are and then light up which is the song of ghost face so right. yeah so go listen to those so y'all can get warmed up 
for yeah. when you buy for when you buy this album. Yeah. <laughs> because we got because we're gonna buy the album. So, and I just want to say thank you for you, and I'm glad you are a singer. So thank you very much, and thank your mother for me, for gracing you on this earth with your talent and everything. Thank so, you. And thank for your time and everything. I love you. Thank you. I love you, too. Thank you so much. Yes. Yep. What's up, everybody? I'm Vivian Green, and you are watching Conversations with Cuddy. Peace and love.